Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Web3.js library and I'm going to be showing you kind of how to use a lot of cool tips and tricks that you may not know about with Web3. Um, so this is part of a you know larger series of Web3.js tutorials you can check out on my channel. Um, and it's not necessary that you watch those, but it might help. Um, but this video is kind of designed for you to just jump right in and go. Um, so check out those other videos if you have time and be sure to subscribe to the channel and also be sure to check out my website at dappuniversity.com where I'm going to be releasing the code um, along with these videos um, as soon as I can. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go back to this kind of project template that I've been uh, using throughout this tutorial series. I basically have just an app.js file here and a, a terminal where I'm gonna run this with Node. Um, so you know, make sure you've got Node installed. And just go to your terminal, type Node-V, check. And you wanna make sure you had the Web3 library installed. Uh, you can do npm install Web3, like that. So I've got, you know, this is boilerplate uh, code here um, with this app.js file. And what I've done is just required the Web3 library from Node and from Node Package Manager. And I have uh, created a new Web3 instance with an Ethereum remote node URL from Infura. And I'll show you how to set that up in the previous videos. So check that out if you're unfamiliar. Um, the, the big picture is that you just need a link from Infura. You can sign up to get one of these. And I'm connected to the main Ethereum blockchain. So. What we're going to do is kind of just walk you through some cool um, tips for Web3. So the first thing I want to show you is Web3's got a cool way where you can actually get um, the kind of average gas price on the network. So you do that like this. Web3.eth.getGasPrice. We will just console log this. Okay. Run this. Oops. All right, we can see this value and we could actually uh, log this like this and say results. And we can use more Web3 utilities to convert this value to ether. Three uh, from what AS utils actually. And we can say uh, results, say ether. See if that works. Oh, I got to console log this. All right, it's a pretty small amount. But that's the uh, average gas price expressed in way, you know, which is the smallest denomination of ether, kind of like a really small penny, um, from the last few blocks. And it, it basically calculates the median gas price in order to show you that number. So that's a pretty cool uh, thing you can use whenever you're trying to calculate um, you know, the gas price currently for the network. Now, the next thing I'll show you is um, how you can have access to you know, hashing functions with Web3. You can use uh, SHA-3, like this, 3. Uh, utils uh, SHA-3. This is a hashing function that we can use, and we can say uh, DAP University. Let's just see what happens here. Oh, sorry, I want to console log. All right, so you can see the hash value there. And there's a couple of different things you should know about this. Um, if you want to hash, you know, like a number, you can do it like this. You need to wrap it in a string. Because if you do it with a raw integer like this, it won't work. All right. So it needs to be wrapped in a string in order to run the hashing function, or you can use a big number. Uh, Oops, sorry, I don't, have, I don't have this pulled in actually. Um, yeah, I would just use a string. So, um, one thing to know is that you can, uh, if you're gonna do a hex value like this, uh, it also has to be inside of a string. You can't 
just do it raw. It won't work. Okay. This also has an alias, uh, KCAC 256. I believe. I think that's right. Yeah. I always have a hard time spelling this. Yeah, it looks like I just had a typo. Sorry, I, I always misspell this thing. Um, but yeah, that's the alias. is KCAC 256. Um, and that just does the same thing. So you can see three. See, the result's the same. And so Web3, important to know that Web3 will generate a SHA uh, a little differently than Solidity will. And Web3 gives you access to the Solidity SHA3 hashing function. You can say Solidity uh, SHA3. Now, the reason to know about this is because it's going to calculate, you know, the SHA3 of the input parameters the same way Solidity would, which basically means that the arguments, um, they'll be ABI converted, and they're going to be tightly packed before they're actually hashed, which works a little differently than how a 3 does it. So another thing that you can look at is um, we can get access to... Uh, a little bit of randomness. We can say um, like this. You can say uh, web three dot utils uh, random hex, and we can pass in the uh, length that we want. All right, and we can also pass in you know, zero. All right, and we can pass in, you know, 32. Okay. So another really useful thing, um, and this is a nice little gem if you're kind of uh, trying to debug things in the console. Uh, one of the things that always frustrates me about JavaScript is that it, you know, doesn't really have much of a standard library uh, to speak of. And... You know, if you're coming from a language um, that has a lot of rich uh, features and uh, sometimes, you know, JavaScript leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, and I understand why. I mean, your footprint really matters with JavaScript because it's designed primarily to run in your browser. Um, and, you know, we always have to worry about, you know, how many features we have in a language like that. You don't want a really heavy footprint in a browser, so I understand. But sometimes, you know, you always find yourself pulling in libraries to handle things. And one thing that Web3 ships with is uh, underscore JS, which is a little known fact. So um, you can get access to the underscore library like this. You can say, uh, I don't know if this will let me do this. Let's try this. Const, uh, let's try this. Web3 tills. Well, first of all, let's just log this. Just to prove that it's there. All right, we can see all of the uh, functions that are in the underscore library. If you're not familiar with it, um, I'll just show you. So, you know, underscore JS is a, uh, a library that has a lot of nice uh, functions that allow you to uh, do things you can't really do natively in JavaScript or uh, maybe some cleaner ways to do things uh, or just extend your JavaScript development experience. So instead of pulling that in with Node, you can uh, have access to it. Sometimes this is helpful when you're debugging things in the console with Web3 and you want to use something like an underscore function. So for example, um, let's see if we can do this. It may, not, it may have a naming conflict. Equals, we'll see if this works. Oh, it worked, okay. Um, so let's say, for example, uh, something you can do in underscore is say, um, we can you know, use each, and we can map over an object. Um, let's just say key one. Uh, we'll say value one and you know key two value two 
and we can uh, you know pass this function and we can say you know console log uh, key I believe it I believe the order is value key I think so let's just see yep I got it right so you know you could basically pluck off the keys from an object and iterate over it and just have access to the key value pairs. Um, so that's, that's like an example of something you can do with underscore JS. And now you know that you have it uh, handy prepackaged for you with Web3. So, you know, that's an example of a few things that we can do um, with, you know, Web3. And I'll kind of just show you uh, more of the documentation um, with Web3. We can... Uh, kind of pull this down here and say, I wanted to just kind of leave you with this because this is probably gonna be the last video in this series that I do, um, unless there's something else you all are sure that you wanna see. Um, just notice that there's different, you know, uh, uh, modules in here we, we looked at. We looked at the ETH or ETH or ETH uh, modules and saw a lot of things in there. Um, you, you know, you can do other things like the subscribe module, uh, bitch, you know, this is what allows you to subscribe to specific events on the blockchain, uh, which is pretty cool. Allows you to listen to certain things. Um, you know, you can subscribe to syncing. You know, if you're syncing a geth node, you can always see if that's uh, uh, doing anything. Um, you know, we used contract when we were interacting with a contract. We used accounts when we were interacting with accounts. We were, you know, uh, doing things like that. Um, there's personal. And this is what you would use, like, with the um, you know, the Ethereum nodes accounts, like if you're using Geth as the personal library, uh, we kind of stayed away from that because uh, I was trying to show you how to use Web3 uh, with Infura remotely rather than interacting with Geth. Um, so we didn't do much with the personal library. Um, but just as a general explanation, you know, uh, an Ethereum node can basically have accounts. And like if you're running Geth locally, um, you can, you know, keep track of your accounts with the personal library. Um, let's see some other things. So one thing to notice here is this uh, SSH, or sorry, SHH. This is, uh, this is the library for interacting with Whisper. So if you're not familiar with Whisper, Whisper is basically, you know, a protocol for like broadcasting messages across uh, the network. And it's kind of, uh, sorry, kind of devised for a, a communication protocol between dApps. Um, but I know people are using it to uh, create like chatting applications and things like that. So uh, that's what Whisper is. And this is, you know, the part of Web3 that allows you to uh, interact with Whisper protocol. And if you want to read more about that, you can just uh, click this here. All right. So that's it today, guys. Um, that's probably all I got for this episode. And that's probably the last episode of this series, unless there's something else that you all are dying to see. If you are, uh, be sure to leave a comment down in the subscription below. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the previous videos in this playlist. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University. Mm -hmm.